Does it make sense to listen to Jesus? Most often than not, the teachings of Jesus seem to go against what we may consider human logic or human reasoning. Most often than not, the teachings of Jesus require us to throw human reasoning and human logic away. Many times, when you think about the disciples who answered the call of Jesus, we talk about the things that they gave up to follow Jesus. And when we talk about the things that they gave up, our focus are on the material things they gave up. They abandoned their boats, their fishing nets, their profession, some even their families. But hardly do we think about one immaterial thing that they gave up, and that is their point of view. And for me, giving up their point of view must have been more difficult than giving up the material things that we talk about more often. Last week, no, that was two weeks back, on Thursday at Mass, the Gospel passage told the story of Jesus who came to the lake at Gennesaret, where he entered into Simon Peter's boat from where he began to preach to the crowds. And when he was done preaching, he said to Simon Peter, throw the net into the water. And Simon Peter and the other disciples had spent the previous night laboring, making every effort, but could not catch a single fish. And so Simon said to Jesus, we had labored all night and caught nothing. But if you are commanding me to throw the net now, I will do that because it is coming from you. There are many things about this conversation that do not make sense. To start with, Jesus was a carpenter. Simon Peter was a professional fisherman. Jesus' foster father, Joseph, was a carpenter, and like it was done then, he must have passed on the trade to Jesus. But there's nowhere in the Bible that mentioned Jesus being a fisherman. And yet, this carpenter comes to the professional fisherman to give the professional fisherman a professional advice on how to fish. It makes no sense. Not only that, the professional fisherman had spent the night, the best time to fish, and they caught nothing. And now, the carpenter is advising them to throw the net while the sun was already out, when it was easier for the fish to see them and run away, telling them to throw the net at that time. It made no sense. But Peter obeyed, and he threw the net. And what was the result? He caught so many fish that their nets began to tear. Yes, it made no sense when Jesus said that. But in the long run, he was proven to be right. Today's Gospel passage reveals another of Jesus' teaching that seem to be against human reasoning and human logic. Today, he teaches about forgiveness. Beginning from last Sunday, remember last Sunday, Jesus talked about the need for us to call back, to gain back the lost brother, the lost sister. The steps to take when someone offends us. And today, Peter, who is a very practical person, 
not wanting to take anything for granted, now turns to Jesus to ask. Now that you have taught us the steps to take in order to forgive one who offends us, tell me, how many times do we need to go through these steps? What if the person comes back offending us? How many times must we go through the steps before we retaliate? And Peter, who was impatient, would not even wait for an answer from Jesus. And so, he goes on to suggest seven times. And Jesus says, not seven, but 77 times. This response from Jesus also seemed to make no sense. Many people have tried to interpret the response from Jesus in different ways, trying to translate it into figures. What does it mean? 77 times. Is it like 7, 7, like 77? Or is it 70 times 7? And no matter what the interpretation may be, let us even take the lower number, 7, 7, 77. How practicable it is. How, practi how practical is it? Come to think of it. That someone offends you up to 77 times. Then you are free to retaliate. So if we are to follow it in a literal sense. Just picture yourself. Carrying your logbook. And then you have the names of all those. In your family. And all your friends. Co-workers and classmates. And somebody offends you. Number one number two, number three, and you keep counting until you get 77 for all of them before you retaliate. You will go crazy. That will be the only thing you will do for the rest of your life. So it makes no sense. In that case, the only way we can interpret what Jesus is saying is when it comes to forgiveness, there is no limit. Just continue to forgive. No matter how many times you are offended, Continue to forgive. But does that really make sense? Does it make sense to forgive when the offense is coming from your family members? Does it make sense to forgive when the offense is coming from your friends? Those who know you well. Those that you care for so much. Does it make sense to forgive those you expect to know better? Does it make sense to forgive those who hurt you deliberately and maliciously? Does it make sense to forgive those who take their time to research on how to harm you, how to hurt you? Does it make sense? Does it make sense to forgive those who deliberately take you for granted? It makes no sense. But in case you are listening to me now, and your answer to all my questions is yes. That it makes sense, that it's easy to forgive. I put it back to you that you have not truly been offended. I put it back to you that your finger has not been beaten by the mouth that you have fed. If you are telling me that you find it easy to forgive, I put it back to you that you have never stretched out your hand in love only to return it bruised. It makes no sense to forgive. Yes, it makes no sense to forgive, but we must forgive, not because it makes sense, but because Jesus has commanded us to forgive. Just like Peter, it made no sense to him when Jesus asked him to throw the net into the water when it was not sensible, when it made no sense to throw the net because of the time of the day. But Peter did it just because Jesus said. And what was the result? Jesus was proven to be right. Yes, it may make no sense, but we keep forgiven. For the sake of our own sanity, it may make no sense, but we have to forgive because we have been forgiven by the Father. It may make no sense, but we must forgive because the one we call an enemy today 
may become the only solution to our problem tomorrow. It may make no sense, but we must forgive because we do not know the complete story of that person. It may make no sense, but we must forgive because the bridge that we burn today may be the only bridge we will need tomorrow when the other side of the river will be on fire. My dearly beloved in Christ, yes, the teachings of Jesus today may make no sense. Telling us to forgive today may make no sense. But we must obey because Jesus has said it. For if it does not make sense today, in the long run, we will discover that Jesus was right. And knowing how difficult it is to forgive, my dearly beloved in Christ, remember the words of Scripture that our true peace, our lasting peace, only comes from doing the will of God. So difficult as it may be, for the sake of that true peace, let us continue to forgive. And see, knowing how difficult it is to forgive, that on our own we cannot. I pray for you as I pray for myself, that God may forgive us our sins and grant us the grace and help us to forgive those who sin against us until we come to our heavenly inheritance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.